In the past, it's been nearly impossible to create a client portal on Airtable directly because it's cost prohibitive. Let's say you're on the business plan, for example, and you're paying $45 a user a month. Now, if you were working with, let's say 50 different clients, those 50 clients would each have their own seat. And that would be really expensive to have each client pay for a seat just to do some simple updates in a client portal. But this has actually spawned a new line of products such as Softer, NoLoco, and Stacker, all of which offer more attractive products Pricing. They connect to your Airtable data in the back end, and your users can interact with a portal on the front end. But this brings up the question, would it be possible to create a client portal only using Airtable and only using free read-only users? And the answer, my friends, is yes. It might not be quite as great of an experience as if you're using some of those third-party tools, but in this video, we're gonna show you how it's possible. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours get up and running on Airtable and integrated to your business applications. In any database tool, we're typically talking about CRUD operations, the ability to create, to read, to update, and to delete records. Now with read-only users, as you can imagine, this is pretty easy to be able to read records, to see the data. In interfaces, we have dashboards and list views where we can see all of the information that we need to. Creating records is a little bit more tricky. We can create records through the use of forms, which we'll talk about, and updating and deleting records then takes a little bit of trickery when it comes to automations, but it's all possible. Let me take you through a quick demo of how this is going to look to the user to see what their experience is like before we actually build this ourselves. I'm going to use a simple client portal example because you can extend this in a number of different ways. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on those CRUD operations as it comes to tasks. So as a client, we want the ability to create new tasks that we're asking our agency to be able to complete for us. Here, I can see a list of the tasks that we already have in progress. And notice that up at the top, we have the ability to click a button to add a new task. If I click on that, that's going to open up a form that we create. And here I've got a subject, due date, and notes. Again, we're keeping this pretty simple. You'll notice that we can also track the user up at the top. This is helpful so that we can stamp the created by in this record. So let's go ahead and fill in our subject. We need some new PowerPoint assets for our brand redesign. We're gonna put in a due date and we'll add some notes here as well. Let's go ahead and create that record. Now we've completed this successfully and it's gonna actually redirect us back into our main application. Here we've loaded this and you can see that we have an automation that just ran in the background where we can now see this task that we just created. We'll open up our task here. We can see details of that. That's what we just created. And notice that we had some extra information filled in. So because we're typically talking about B2B portals, meaning we have businesses and within those businesses that we're working with, there are multiple different people that we're interacting with. Here we had an automation that calculated which account that Sue Smith was a part of. And that's how we're determining which tasks that she can see on the screen. Now let's say that she wanted to update this record. Oh, you know what? We changed this. Uh, we actually need this by a different due date. Then we can go and click to update this task. And here it loads a form and we're doing some form trickery in the background. So we'll get into what exactly that we're doing. But notice this is pulling up the information that we've already submitted. And now I can change that due date and plug in a different due date instead. And we've got the option if we wanted to delete that task, we could. I'm gonna go ahead and update this record. And this is going to, again, run the automation in the background, redirect us back into our application. So now the due date has shifted to February 19th. It's moved up in our list and now we're ready to go. And finally, if we want to delete that task, we could open that up, we could update the task, and here we could click on delete task, go ahead and update that. Same thing, gonna run an automation in the background. It's going to redirect us back to where we were, and we've now deleted that record. We didn't actually do a hard delete because I think most of the time you don't wanna do that, but we updated it so it's filtered out of our view. So first let's talk about how we're architecting this. I've got three main tables. I've got tasks, account, and task updates. I threw invoices on here just to remind you that you can do whatever you want with this application. So invoices is a very common one. Typically we don't need people to update records. If you wanna check out our video on our invoice generator using interfaces or using Docs Automator to automatically create PDFs with our Airtable data, those would be great options as well that you can check out if you wanna get more into invoices that we could show in the portal. But like I said, most most importantly, we have the tasks. That's what we're asking the users to create in the first place. And that's what we're tracking. As we're actually working with our clients, we're updating things in these tasks. 
We have our account here. And again, this is so that we can have tasks that are attached to accounts and not just individual users who created them because we're doing this in a B2B scenario. And we also have these task updates, which is where we have that trickery in the background because our forms in Airtable only allow us to create records. We can't actually run an actual update on the same table, which is why we create this intermediary table of task updates to have a form where it feels like we're updating a task, but in the background, we're just really telling the system how to run an automation to do the actual updating of the task. And we'll get into some more details as we go through this video. Let's talk about our sharing settings. So right now I'm on my base. This is not the area to click. It's not share up at the top here to share the base or the view because we don't want our clients to have access to other data. We don't want them to see the other clients that we're working with. That's data that we want to keep private. And so we're only sharing this with our clients via an interface. So if we click on interfaces up at the top and we go to edit our interface, now it's this share button that we see up at the top of our interface, which is where we're managing our users. So we're going to share our client portal. Here's where we can put in their email address. And this is really important. We don't want them to be an editor. We want them to be a read only user. They cannot edit, they cannot comment, or else you're gonna get charged. And we want to keep this free. So make them a read only user. You can see in my case, if I click on manage access that I've added this Sue Smith with a fake email address here and made her a read only user. Now, some of you might've been wondering why we had this request a task sample here. Now, if you're adding new pages to your interface and you click that plus button and you choose a form, this is what you'll be getting. And so we've got request a task. However, if we do it through this mechanism, if we look back over at what the client sees, notice that when they try to request a task via this form, they can't click into it. You don't have permission to add new records. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because we can't add new records via that form layout, but we can in a form view, and we can also do it in the new form editor that's kind of part of the interfaces, and that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So the forms that we'll actually be using are down in this area nested under the interface, and you can see this is for externally shareable forms for people that don't have Airtable access. So in those CRUD operations, the easiest one to talk about is the read operation, being able to see our data. And in this case, I've got a list view of tasks. Again, I was able to add that by pressing the plus button and I added a list here and I connected that to my tasks table. And in this case, notice how the user is not seeing all of the tasks that we have available to us. So we can do that by adding a filtered condition set here. If I click on the settings here, notice I'm doing two things. One is I'm saying, if it's the status of deleted by client, we're not doing a hard delete, but we're just saying it's a status of deleted by client. And then we also want to filter this based on the assigned user. But remember, we want to do this based on their account. Well, how do we handle that? Let's go back into our data here. If we look at our tasks table and notice that we have our account, this is a linked record. So Sue Smith at the account, she's assigned to Acme Incorporated and we could have multiple users that are here alongside of Sue. And so what we need to do is we added a lookup field we're having the assignee from the account show here so that this is visible now on the task record so that we can use this for filtering inside of our interface. So now this gives us the ability if we go into our filter conditions and we open that up, if we click on here, we can say, hey, if that assignee from account, this is that lookup field, if it has any of, and this is great, instead of just picking a static user, we can filter this based on the current user. So we're basically saying, if the current user is attached to this account, those are the tasks that we want to see. So even if Sue created a task and Tom works at Acme Incorporated as well, both Sue and Tom would be able to see those tasks. Next, let's talk about creating new records. And we do that via a form. So again, you'll see that forms area down below. You can press a plus button to create a new form. And this particular form I have for requesting a new task. So this is going to be tied to the tasks table, not the task updates table, the task table itself. You can add some logos and images and things like that to spice it up a little bit. 
So here you'll notice that we can actually see the person who's submitting that form. You can toggle that on in the settings to see who submitted a response. This is really cool because in the old days of Airtable, everything was anonymous. It would just be anonymous users who submitted that form. If you toggle this on, we're going to be able to see that Sue, the user, submitted this form, not just an anonymous person. And then here I've got my fields that I want, a subject, a due date, and notes. Subject, I just relabeled here from name just to be a little bit more descriptive. And then the other thing that we can do is we can grab the URL that we have up at the top of our list view and use that as the redirect behavior. So after we've submitted or created that task, we want the user to come back to this screen. So we can copy that up at the top. We can go back to our form. And then in the settings here, we can choose to redirect to a specific URL. Now you could choose a different redirect behavior. This is kind of cool. You could use a record ID. So maybe you wanted to open up that specific record as opposed to going to the list view. In this case, I think it's kind of nice to look at the list view. Now, if we go into our automations here, we've created new automation to add the account to a new task. So what we're doing is when the form submission occurs, so when there's the, the tasks table and we request a task, when that comes in from the form, then we're going to try to find the account record based on the person who submitted that form. So here we're doing a find records step where we're looking for the account based on a condition where the assignee matches that created by ID. So if I look back in my data here, if we go over to my tasks, we have this created by field. And this is one that you can add yourself. It's an out of the box field type. So we've got created by, created time. This created by is what's able to track that Sue Smith or Dan Lehman, whoever's logged in and filling out that form. That's how we're going to grab that person's information so we can look up that account. So back in the automation, then in the step where we're looking up the account, we're doing this dynamically. So we can plug in, we can go ahead and grab that ID that we're looking for created by. And we can just use that ID to be able to find the record. We can test that action to see who gets returned here. And you can see that this pulls back that Acme Incorporated based on that assignee of Sue Smith. Then all we need to do here is to update the record. And here we can say, hey, we're updating the task record based on what was originally created. So we've got our tasks table and this Airtable record ID is coming in just from using that Airtable record ID from the form submission. And then here we're plugging in any accounts that match that. Typically, you'd probably just have a single account. But again, we're doing that dynamically. We're coming into our find records and we're scrolling down to our Airtable record IDs, make a new list of that and plugging that in. So basically that form submits and immediately we're taking that created by user and we're looking up their account to then stamp the account and update that initial task. Now remember this is for a B2B use case. If you're working directly with clients themselves with no need for an account, this is just an extra step that you don't need. Now on our interface page, we just need to add that button so we can go ahead and create the new task. So if we click here, we can configure configure a new button. You can click on this gear icon and we can add a button or multiple buttons. Let's open this up and you can see that I added a label of adding a new task and we're going to go to an external URL. Now, a lot of the other button options that we have here, Airtable doesn't want us to do as free users. Things like run an automation, we can't do because it's trying to restrict what we have access to. And in this case, we're just gonna open up the URL of that form itself. So copy and paste in the form URL because that's what's going to open up here. And then you can turn off the opening in a new tab rather than adding tons of new tabs as we go along. It's gonna kind of feel like it's part of one application which is what we want for our client's user experience. So that's how we handle the creation of new records. Now that that button is hooked up, we've got it hooked up to the form. We've got the automation from the form to add the account. Now we can read those records. We've got create and read taken care of. The biggest chunk here we have is updating and deleting our records. So we've actually created a new form here to update our task. And you might kind of wonder why are we creating a new form? Because that updating a task looks very similar to requesting a task. And again, the reason is because Airtable doesn't allow us to have a form that directly updates a record. Instead, we're kind of using automations in the background to make this all work. So on my task updates table, I have the name or the subject of the task. I have my notes and I have my due date. This is essentially mimicking what we have on our tasks table itself. 
We also have a link to the task record here because this is very important in our automation. We need to tell it which is the task that we need to actually go and update. Because if we come back into our user experience as the client would experience it, and they open up that record, remember they press this button to update a task. This is really creating a new form submission. Well, how does it know all of this information? That's where pre-filling comes in. So now let's go to our tasks table. And on our tasks table is a really important formula that we have. And I titled this update task form. Now it's probably gonna be most helpful either if you're interacting with the template that we have over on the website, or if you wanna get more into this, I'm not gonna explain all the nuances of pre-filling and hiding fields. We have a separate video for that on Airtable forms. Really good idea to check that out because this is something that will come back that you'll use time and time again as you're building on Airtable. Essentially what we're saying is, hey, take that form the page that we were just on and we paste that in here and now we're going to pre-fill all of this data. So we're going to pre-fill the name and we need to encode the URL component to make sure we don't have extra punctuation and things that would mess it up. And we're going to plug in the due date field that we have and we're going to plug in the notes. So this is where we're sending all that information to open it up, which we see over here so it looks like all of that data is filled in for us and then the other really important one that we have here is we need to fill in the link to the task which is the record id of this task record so that it tells it okay well if here's task one two three four five here's what we have linked to on the back end and we've actually hidden this field so if we go back into our interface and go to our update task, notice that that link to task field is something that we are hiding on the back end. We're pre-filling it and we're hiding it so that if you're the user, you don't have to worry about seeing the task ID or something like that. We just want the system to be able to update it in the background. So that's how we pre-fill the information in our form. Again, if pre-filling is totally new to you, I encourage you to check out our separate video where we go through all the nuances of form so you can get a little bit better acquainted with that. Next, we need to have another automation here for updating the task from the update form. So this one is when a form is submitted, but we're doing it on the task updates table. We're doing that from the update a task form. And then we've got a little conditional logic. If the person is deleting the record, which is just a soft delete, they're not doing a hard delete on the record, we're checking for that. And then we're just gonna update that status to deleted by client, which if you remember at the beginning, we filtered out for that. So essentially when we update and we say deleted by client, the user no longer sees it. So they assume it was deleted. And then if they didn't delete the record, any other kind of update they did to that record, then we want to go ahead and update our record. And we're doing so by updating the name with the name that we have and the due date and the notes. So essentially what we're doing is we're now telling it to update the tasks table. And for the record ID here, remember this is what got pre-filled and hidden on the back end. So we can choose this dynamically from the form submission and we scroll down and we can select the task. So now it knows which task we need to update as part of the process. Then you plug in the other values like name, due date, and notes, and this will update that automatically for us. So now it's pretty cool. We can test this out again if we wanna to go to that due date and let's put it out, oh, I don't know, sometime in March. Let's go ahead and update our record there. Should redirect us back again into our list of records. And we can see, yes, it did update that for us. So what's really cool is now if we are not the client, but we're the agency and we're working on this and we wanna see, wait, what did our client update? Because is it okay for them to update that due date? Does that work for everybody? Did they add new notes to this? So now we can find that task and we can open it up and we could see in our revision history, everything that has been updated. So we can see that automation ran and the due date changed and we can see, oh, hey, we use this update task from update form and we've updated the date. So this is how as an agency, it's really convenient. We can see both the original task information and if our client has asked us to update things along the way, now we can see the full history that we have. I know that was a lot to pack into one video, but remember we have lots of other resources for this. Remember there's the template over on the website and then we've got our videos on forms as well as our videos on interfaces if you want to really dig in and build this for yourself. If you have any questions about getting set up with Airtable, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automation helpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.